This might actually be a quick chat. Have you got a tip or maybe one? Hey, Skip. As I record this, Apple has just had its WWDC 2021, its big announcement of new features for the Mac, the iPhone, the iPad, and the Apple Watch. Big announcements, uh, lots going on, and actually the more you read the fine print, the more interesting things there are there. But for us, for writers, specifically for writers like you and me, I think there are six things that are significant for us, six things that I, that I want to use for my writing, that I want to use to help with my business as a writer and that I just want to play with. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who use Macs and iPhones and iPads for our writing. Do subscribe because usually we have so much to talk about. This time it's just six fast things. Six fast writer's tools from WWDC 2021, starting with live text. Your iPhone, iPad and Mac will be able to read the text in photographs. Take a photograph of a whiteboard and it will let you select the text and copy it, paste a typed version into a note or an email. The features, the features new coming later this year, but the photos don't have to be. Any photo you've ever taken of notes in a class, weird markings on the side of ships, it'll read them all. Second, speaking of notes in class, there's going to be a new feature called Quick Notes. I mean, really, it's the existing Apple Notes, the existing very good Apple Notes, but like a faster way to start a new note in it when you, you're doing something else, and also actually a fast way to keep coming back to that note as you carry on working through things like research. I've, I've actually been planning to talk to you in detail about Apple Notes, because I've now moved over to it uh, from Evernote entirely. And that was originally because Evernote was just becoming so much of a pain, but now actually it's also increasingly because Apple Notes is rather good. This is gonna seal the deal for me, at least. Say you're in Safari, browsing a website, you're in Excel doing your taxes, gotta get my taxes done. Uh, you think of something, a story idea, you need to make a note of, boom, done. You're making a quick note as fast as you can think about it. And iPads were showing you swipe up from a corner of wherever it is, and you're immediately writing. What I am clear about is that this, oh, well, this is a fast way to start that note. And you, you know this, you know how often you think of an idea that's got nothing to do with what you're working on now. You need to get it down or you'll lose it. Uh, I'm also clear that uh, the quick note sticks around. This quick note, I mean, presumably it goes into Apple Notes. You could go look it up there later. But when you come back to the website or the app you're working in later on, quick note's there, still there, waiting for you. So it starts as something you can jot anything down in fast. It becomes something you can update as you go along. So when you're researching a topic, you can build up your research in that quick note. Third, focus. This is a new feature for writers, and you're all right, possibly other people, I don't know, which is meant to help us concentrate because you have problems fixing, concentrating on your writing. And I, I have, look, we're writers, okay? We get easily distracted by the next idea and we've got to stop it. The new focus feature, again, it works across Macs and iPhones, iPads, and actually also Apple Watch to help us when we choose to focus on things. It's a bit like an extension of Do Not Disturb. Because, you know, right now, all of your Apple devices have this Do Not Disturb feature, and when you switch it on, only important call phone calls get through. Uh, chiefly, it's up to you to decide whose calls you, re you regard as important, although there's also a safety thing that uh, if the call is persistent enough, your iPhone figures this has got to be quite important, and eventually lets them through. Um, from iOS 15, iPad OS 15, and Mac OS Monterey later this year, you'll have this, but you'll have gradations of do not disturb. You'll be able to set that you're working, and in that case, maybe only calls from your editor, your producer, your writing partner, whoever you choose, those can get through, everybody else is blocked. Plus, notifications that aren't relevant to what you're doing now will be stopped if you want. Uh, for example, I, I'm, I'm no kind of a sports fan, but I understand there are scores and things and goals, and you can have notifications of 
results or something, I don't know. With focus, you can say, no, no, I'm working, tell me that later. Telling you later, that's the thing I want. Because at the moment, I either get a lot of notifications throughout the day or I've switched them all off and I miss things. When you switch them back on, um, or if you don't look actually as they come in, they kind of pile up, particularly on the Mac in the corner, and it is a chore reading through. What's going to happen now is that you'll get key relevant notifications come through, but then also a digest later, a summary of what you've missed, so you can quickly see when you go, when you choose to catch up. Next, uh, is that fourth, fourth, fourth writer's feature from WWDC 2021, Mindfulness. This is at least going to be part of Apple Watch and the forthcoming Watch OS 8. I don't know if it will also be on iPhones, but I expect so. If you have an Apple Watch, you've already, you're used to it telling you to breathe. Now, it's also going to tell you to just take a moment and stop, would you? Stop thinking about the next thing you've got to write. Stop worrying about the next pressure on. Just take this moment to let yourself think about it right now. It's hard to do, but it is good for us. You, we, you and I, we both know this is good for us. And yeah, having our watches remind us to do it. Well, actually, I'm, I'm as likely as not to ignore it as I am to ignore the breathe bit. But I will practice mindfulness more often because it's there. I'll be aware of it more than I am because the watch is telling me. Fifth, and I'm going to say this one quickly, because either you already know it from iPhone and iPad and are already utterly convinced it's wonderful, yeah, or you're going to have to see it in action on a Mac to be convinced. Trust me on this one. Shortcuts. I think even Apple struggles to make this sound compelling if you've never heard of it before. Um, but it really is. Their main example was that if you always start the day with the same four or five applications, I, mean, I don't know, pages, Word, Mail, Safari, I don't know, something like that, then you could make a shortcut that would launch them all at once. Have it so that you could ask Siri to start your day and Siri will automatically launch all five, four apps, whatever it is. Or that you could press one button to do it or click one link to have it do it. That is absolutely true. It works, but oh, there is so much more. For right now, uh, shortcuts on iOS. When I get a workshop, um, my shortcut on iOS that I compiled, it asks me what's the date of the workshop, it gives me a list of the various companies of which I've booked and I choose, which of the workshops I do for them it is, and I choose it. So I've chosen the dates, I've tapped on the company name, I've tapped on the workshop uh, title, and then I've forgotten all about it. But Shortcuts has already, by the time I've forgotten about it, added the date into my calendar, it's gone into my to-do app, OmniFocus, and it's added the date of the workshop, it's added the fact that I need to prepare for it 10 days before whatever that date is, it tells me it has a to-do that I have to invoice the company the day after whatever that date is. This one shortcut does about 20 different things for me across my different devices, 20 different things that I would otherwise have to remember to do every single time. Shortcuts automate repetitive things that you don't have to remember to do any of them every single time. Shortcuts on the Mac is going to be fantastic. Six and last, because this last because this is just preposterous. This is from a science fiction film and a science fiction film that you didn't believe for a second. Fortunately, Apple's given it a really dull name: Universal Control. God, it's exciting. Isn't it? If you have a Mac and an iPad, or two Macs and an iPad, or two iPads, basically any three qualifying Apple devices, you can use them all together more than ever before. So you've been out on a research trip with your iPad, you get back to your writing desk, writing desk in your office, you put your iPad down just on the table next to your Mac, and then from your Mac, using your Mac's keyboard and mouse, you can control the iPad. It's like you can just reach over to the iPad and pull off any document or image or anything you need. Just putting the devices side by side does it. No wires, no cables, no setting anything up apparently. Just pop the devices down together and use them as one. Yeah, I think we need to see universal control in action before I entirely believe it. And we can't, actually, not yet. Um, what's happening is that the forthcoming iOS 15, iPadOS 15 and macOS Monterey 
well, they are available right now for developers in a beta version. And if you don't happen to know, beta stands for don't be insane. This will break your Mac and your iPhone. Um, incidentally, by the way, Universal Control isn't in the beta yet, so you'd be breaking your Mac and your, for less reason. Uh, then sometime in July, there'll be a public beta that you could get if you were mad. But then around September or October time, we will all get all of this officially released. That does seem like a long time to wait, because it is, really. Um, knowing that these six features in particular are coming, or well, these six and the rest, does kind of already make me feel as if the current Mac OS Big Sur is already out of date. Mind you, that is another thing, Big Sur. I suppose uh, if you're American, the name Big Sur is familiar as Big Ben is here in the UK, but to me, Monterey just sounds much better. Plus I've been to Monterey, I like it there. Um, I like it here too. I like it here too, talking to you. That's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourself, eh? And I'll see you soon.